Hello, everybody. Welcome to our first lecture on Christopher Columbus. Glad to uh, be here or whatever together. Um, in advance, I apologize if I'm not not looking right at you guys or whatever. I'm, at various times, I have my notes up here on my screen, and so um, I'll be looking at that. And I also have my handy dandy iPad with a couple of notes on it too. So I'll be looking over there every once in a while. But glad to be here at our first our first class. Hope you guys are excited. Um, this first week we'll be dealing mostly with uh, with Christopher Columbus. There there is either going to be a second video, um, which might already be out as you're watching this, um, on 16th century colonialism, um, or there'll be something that I wrote, basically basically an essay um, that I wrote regarding the, regarding the same topic. One of those sh should be posted even now. Um, and you'll have seen which one it is. So there will either be another lecture, which also, but this week's topic is ranges from um, Columbus to 16th century colonialism. That's what we're covering for this week. Um, this week's reading, which also should be posted by the time that you're looking at this video, um, is a journal article that was that was released online um, and that you can read for free. And I have the link. Um, on the website, it deals a lot with uh, multiculturalism and monoculturalism, and the reason that we're reading it is because, and this, <laughs> and this week, I know that before in my opening video, I kind of said that um, we'll be talking a lot about the significance um, and the why, as far as history goes, and not so much on on the what. This week's going to be different. Um, we still won't be focusing on the what. We'll talk about that. We need to know that, but that won't be the focal point. But we're not going to so much talk about the significance only because I think that the the significance of Columbus is clear. I mean, we wouldn't have American history if there was no America. Um, we, I mean, there would be an America anyway, but, you know, me teaching, you guys learning, um, that it simply wouldn't exist. Obviously, nothing would exist as we know in American history, as we know, it wouldn't have happened unless it was discovered, unless there was a starting point. Columbus is that starting point, and so the significance is he started everything. So everything that we study for the rest of the semester goes back at least to a common starting point as easily as any other, and that would be Columbus. So talking about the significance, obviously there were there were other short term, um, shorter term significant things that came about from Columbus discovering it, but a lot of those had had way more to do with Europe um, than they did with America. And so maybe sometime down the road, I'll be teaching Western Civ and you guys will be in that and we can learn about how it was significant as it relates to Europe. But that's not so much our concern here. And so even a lot of the short-term significance and, and, and the, uh, the things that were being traded, the, um, both from Europe to America and then from the Native Americans back to Europe and, and the impact it had on European um, economics and wealth and how it you know, changed the power structure there among the governments. All that had to do with Europe, which we're not concerned with. And so the significance of Columbus is a little bit difficult as it relates to American history, simply because it was significant in every single possible imaginable way. And you know, we can't talk about we can't talk about all those. And so instead of focusing so much on the um, on the significance, we're, we're more going to use this as an opportunity to talk about the way that we think about history. Um, and as it relates to Columbus, the way that we think about culture um, is going to impact a lot of the way that we think about Columbus. And so the article that's been assigned to read um, is a lot to do with multiculturalism. And, and, and that's a, uh, a way of thinking about history that is more recent um, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s today, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a last 50 years type of thing. Um, not every historian of the last 50 years obviously th thinks that way or, or um, does history that way. Um, but a significant portion do, and a significant portion of those that you take from in college, whether, you know, even at a, um, even at American History 1 and 2 or Western Civ 1 and 2, even at that base level, a lot of them are going to be multiculturalist. And if you, if you do any sorts of other, you know, if you uh, major in history or uh, minor in history or, you know, even stuff with humanities or, um, 
you know, if you do education, you know, and, and learn about how to teach history and education, you know, a lot of it is going to be informed by multiculturalism. Um, and so this article kind of um, accepts multiculturalism, and a lot of multiculturalists have a lot of good things to say, but he also shows kind of the limits of it. Anyway, you'll read it. Again, it's a college-level journal article, and so do I expect you guys to, you know, absolutely understand every single thing that he says now. I mean, he'll be talking about historians that you've never heard of. Um, he writes well um, and at an advanced level, and says, you know, you don't, if you do understand everything and if you engage with the article and think that it's awesome, then that's great. You've got a head start. But obviously don't be discouraged if some of it is you haven't heard before um, or are new concepts or are difficult to understand. That's, that's normal. Um, they're difficult for me to understand. So, you know. Uh, so, anyways, let's start. Let's start with uh, with just talking a little bit um, about who Columbus is. Who was Columbus? And there's these two um, kind of different camps of people that argue about who Columbus was. How should we think about Columbus? You know, was Columbus some sort of navigating hero? Um, who persevered through hardship and doubt and discovered this land that would hold the best country of all time ever for all of humanity. You know, was that Columbus? Or was Columbus some sort of psychopathic maniac who murdered and raped and committed genocide, you know, on this peaceful and peace-loving and indigenous people who just wanted to live their own, you know, was that Columbus? Was he this horrible, horrible guy or was he this hero, this mythical crew? Well, obviously the answer is he was neither. He was, he was, you know, he was somewhere in between. And, and those two camps both have their reasons for existing. Um, it's not arbitrary, but they're, they're both wrong to some degree. Obviously Columbus was, you know, um, a significant historical figure. And he did some things right, and you know he wasn't the first to discover America. You know, Leif Erikson was there before him, hundreds of years before him, um, and possibly one or two others. Although we're not going to talk about them. Um, so it wasn't. I mean, was he the first? No. Was he was he the best explorer in the world? No. For crying out loud, he died not even knowing that he had discovered a new world. He was convinced he had discovered the West Indies and hence Indians. Um, so was he just the best navigator, you know, sharpest tool in the shed? No, but the fact of the matter is no one from Europe, unless you count Leif Erikson, had done what he did before he did it. And so in that way, yes, he's significant. He did some things right. He had three ships. He didn't have a fleet. Um, he, they, weren't, they weren't as raggedy as people pretend they were, but, you know, with three ships, with not that many guys, he went to and from America four times and mostly kept all of his guys alive. Can't say the same for the Indians, but anyway, you know. So he was. He was. He was good at what he did. He he discovered America. You know, the, the multiculturalist, as you'll read in the, as you read in the articles, is that he. It was more like they encountered each other, but it's ridiculous. The Native Americans didn't come to Europe. Columbus went to America. He discovered America. For all, I have no problem with that term, even if he wasn't the first one there, um, and that's something that's significant. You know, and so that's something that we that that we can, history can't take away from Columbus. So in that way, yeah. Was he? Was he this amazing? You know, hero that deserves to have a holiday named after him. Yeah, probably not so much. Um, and again, this is where we have to be careful because at this point. We could ramble on about how oh he he destroyed he committed genocide he murdered eleven million I mean there really is a figure you know there's a there's a popular um, his, his book out there called Lies My History Teacher Told Me and it was a guy who went through he, his main problem was with this whole myth building thing that we as Americans you know tend to do we we love our biographies we love our heroes we love our rich people we love thinking about Steve Jobs we let you know as Americans we love to to make people into myths and so and we've done and throughout you know history more so in the early 20th century 1950s even into um, that's what we did with Columbus and so one of the lies that 
this guy's history teacher told him was regarding Columbus. But in, but in counteracting that lie, you, you can't lie to counteract the lie. And so one figure that gets thrown around by this guy and other historians is that Columbus was, and his men were responsible for the death of 111.7 million Native Americans. That's an incomprehensible figure that could not possibly be true. And it's not true, and it's been proven not true. But even the fact that someone believes that and would write that is simply outrageous. It, I mean, we can't even comprehend that number. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, and so we could. So the point is that at this point, we could go too far, and we could talk about, no, he wasn't quite the figure that, that some history textbooks have made him out to be. He, wasn't, he was, probably wasn't a hero. I think we can say that without qualification. And so at that point, we could say, because he wasn't those things, now let's go too far the other way, and let's paint him out to be a monster. The fact is, he, was, he, wasn't, he also wasn't a monster. I'm going to read from, actually, a paragraph from um, the article that, that you're going to read. And it starts with, The multiculturalists are equally unanimous that Columbus, as the prototypical Western white male, carried across the Atlantic racist prejudices racist prejudices against the native peoples. Gary Nash charges that Columbus, he's just a random historian, don't worry about him, charges that Columbus embodied a peculiar European quality of arrogance rooted in irration, irrational hostility t towards Indians. In a similar vein, Kirkpatrick's sale on the conquest of paradise argues that Columbus presumed the inferiority of the natives, thus embodying the basic ingredients of the Western racist imagination that was bred to fear what it did not comprehend and hate what it knew as fearful. For sale, the historian, Europeans are especially predisposed to violence while the native cultures live in a prelapsarian Eden. And that's a quote, a prelapsarian Eden. So again, you can kind of see how we can go too far the other way. All of a sudden, Europeans are predisposed to violence, sure, some of them, while the Native Americans lived in a prelapsarian Eden, meeting the Garden of Eden, you know, the Garden of Eden, that, that place without sin, you know, he's, he's, he's talking about these Native Americans who were cannibals, who, some of whom sacrificed children ritualistically, um, those are just two, those are two off the top of my head that I can think that different Native Americans, that those people lived in the Garden of Eden, it's crazy. You know, you can see how we can go too far the other way to negate uh, Western-centric, white, Caucasian myth um, myth that we've perpetrated over the years. Now, now now we're going too far the other way. All of a sudden, they live in the Garden of Eden. I mean, come on. Um, Sale concludes, it is not fanciful to see warring against species as Europe's preoccupation as a culture. So we define all European people as being preoccupied with killing each other. We've gone a little bit too far, I'd say. It is true, says this historian, now responding to some of these multiculturalists, it is true that Columbus harbored strong prejudices against the peaceful islanders whom he misnamed Indians. But the truth is he was prejudiced in their favor. For Columbus, they were the, quote, handsomest and most, the handsomest men and the most beautiful women he had ever encountered. He praised the generosity among the, the Tainos, who were just one of the tribes, the first one that he came in contact with, contrasting their virtues with Spanish vices. He insisted that although they were without religion, they were not idolaters. He was confident that their conversion would come through gentle persuasion and not through force. The reason, he noted, is that Indians possess a high natural intelligence. There is no evidence that Columbus thought that the Indians were racially inferior to Europeans. Other explorers, such as Pedro Alvarez Cabral, Amerigo Vespucci, Ferdinand Magellan, and Walter Raleigh, registered similar positive impressions about the new world they found. So again, you can kind of see this guy's responding to some of the multiculturalism um, and how they've gone too far and how they paint Columbus. Let's just keep all that in mind. That's kind of the context for what we're for what we're talking about here. We'll revisit that. Um, but first, let's go over a couple of the facts. These facts, literally, you don't have to write down because 
they're easily accessible. You can Wikipedia them, I'm sure, and there'll be something similar I'm going to read from, from the notes that I have. Um, by the way, if I ever disagree with Wikipedia, what I say is more important, even if I'm wrong. Um, because I don't want to have to go fact check. Fact checked. Fact check myself. And so if I give a fact and Wikipedia gives a fact, at least make a note of that. Um, or anyone else. Or a book. Just cite, cite your source. Um, and if it's Wikipedia, cite the source that Wikipedia is citing. And if Wikipedia isn't citing a source, then it's not valid. And it'll annoy me very much if you cite Wikipedia and not the source that Wikipedia is citing. Anyway, that's for free. Um, here are the facts. Columbus was born in modern-day Italy. When he, he, he read uh, Marco Polo, wanted to go over to the West Indies and trade and make money and all that good stuff. Um, actually, most importantly, he wanted to Christianize the West Indies. Um, that's really what he wanted to do. But the point is, reading Marco Polo, he thought he could get to the West Indies. He tried to go to Portugal. Uh, the Portuguese at the time were a much more powerful government than actually that was, I mean that and maybe another 30 or 40 years was the peak that they would ever reach um, maybe a little bit longer uh, but the point is they were preoccupied they already had a, a, a good trade system and so they weren't hurting you know for money as in, compared to the rest of Europe especially um, and their um, their scholars and their academics thought that Columbus's plan was outrageous and that the miles that he would have to travel over the ocean were exponentially higher than Columbus thought. And so they advised the king not to, um, not to give him money and not to support him in what he was doing, and they didn't. Um, and so Columbus kept going, and he found a country, Spain, Isabella and Ferdinand, um, who were advised not to also by their, their academics and scholars agreed with Portugal's. Um, why they went against what their scholars and academics said is up for debate. It, it probably had a lot to do with, um, well, we might as well. I mean, that seemed to be, you know, it's better that, better that we're, better that we support him and we're wrong than that we don't support him and we're wrong and he goes to England or he goes to France or he goes somewhere else happens to be right and then they get a leg up on us and so it's almost like well we don't think this is going to work but whatever do your best and so that was enough three again three ships not that big of a deal Columbus found the support he found the Spanish flag he found everything they needed they gave him permission to sail under their authority he would end up making four journeys from 1492 when he sailed the ocean blue to 1503. Again, even when he got there, he thought that he had landed in the West Indies. He called them Indians, you know, and to this day, a stupid name, which is why I call them Native Americans, even if even if some people will say that that's liberal propaganda, it's not. They were Native Americans. They were not Indians. Um, so he thought he had landed in the West Indies, and poor guy, he went to his grave, never knowing what a significant uh, discovery he had made, he went to his grave thinking that he had just found a way to get to the West Indies going across the Atlantic Ocean instead of across the continent or whatever. And so, very sad to me that he never knew that we would devote a holiday to him because he discovered a new world. Um, so those are the facts. Those are, those are the things that we need to know as we think about how we should think about history. And again, I hope that what I was saying earlier kind of makes it clear that the, re the, the reason why I was, um, the reason why I was making a point about how we need to be careful and painting Columbus as a um, mass murderer or as a tyrant or as committing genocide is only because that's the popular way of viewing him now. It is equally as dangerous to pretend that aspects of of that way of thinking don't exist. The fact of the matter is a lot and a lot and a tragic amount of Native Americans died as a result of the Europeans coming over and as a result of Columbus making this discovery. Some of that was disease and, and can we blame Columbus for the fact that 
Native Americans had no way to f had no immune system developed in such a way that they could fight the disease that Europeans carried. No, we can't blame him for that. But it wasn't all disease. There was war. There was other factors that went into meaning that this was a horrible, horrible time for Native Americans in a lot of ways. And a lot of them died. And so while we can't go too far and calling him something he isn't and calling it genocide and calling it um, mass murder and all of these things, no, we can't go too far that way. But that doesn't mean that there aren't aspects of that's true. That doesn't mean that we, that, that we don't need to be careful as far as painting him in a conservative light um, and painting him into some sort of hero because he wasn't. Again, here's the thing. Multiculturalists love to say that we, the point of multiculturalism is that we cannot impose our cultures and our society's ethics, um, paradigm for living, um, and way of thinking on another culture and then judge them by that way of our way of thinking the only way by which we can analyze or study or judge another culture is by their own system of ethics their own paradigm their own learned culture and how they would live out their life for one thing there's parts of that 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 aren't valid that aren't valid anyway you know cannibalism is wrong no matter what culture it is, and no matter why cannibalism came to be a part of that society's culture, it's, it's wrong either way. I think that we can all, we should all agree with that. So there's part of that, of multiculturalism, that's wrong just right off the bat, just generally. But even if we accept that way of thinking, it goes both ways. So for the conservative historian, it is unfair for them to say, oh, those Native Americans, they were, they were cannibals and they were child murderers and they were backwards and they were, you know, had all these non-modern, horrible, ritualistic ways of doing things and blah, 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 you know, and all that. While Columbus is this uh, hero who comes over and discovers America and is all great and good and brought peace and, and modernity and, you know, education and blah, 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 all they traded all of these good things to them, gave them guns, whatever. It is unfair for us at, to, to ignore the deficiencies in Columbus and in Europeans and in the way that Europe thought at the time while not extending that same grace, for lack of a better word, to the Native Americans. That is unfair. And liberal historians are correct that that's the wrong way of thinking. But in the same way, Multi, uh, multiculturalists are okay with, with not judging the Native American population by our cultures and our standards and our ethics and our way of thinking. But they are okay with judging Columbus and the Europeans. The fact of the matter is, just because they were European and they were Western doesn't mean that they had the same system of ethics or the same paradigm for living or the same way of thinking about life that we do now. It was a long time ago. Society in general was much more barbaric in those times, and that was okay. And so while we can't impose our system of values on the Native American population, we also can't, if, if, if we can't do that, then we also can't impose our system of values on the Europeans. And so the problem with both camps is that they are much more forgiving of one of the cultures than they are of the other. Both are equally unfair. So what's the point here? The point is that the way that I think that we should think about history and the way that I would want you guys to think about history as, um, as the semester goes on is that we cannot ignore and we cannot make ourselves forget our own system of ethics and our own culture and our own community and our own family and everything that causes us to think that the way that we do today and because we can't do that we shouldn't try 
So that's so so that's one. Multiculturalism is wrong, I think. On the other hand, we also can't pretend that people in history thought the same way that we do now. And so as we analyze history and as we do all of those things, let's remember that that the way that they lived then has helped shape the way that we live now. And, and for that, we owe them thanks because I think life right now is a lot better than it was 600 years ago, 500 years ago. But, be, but because of that, we do, need to allow, we do need to let their system of ethics determine the way that they lived at the time, if that makes any sense. And we can't do that in either way. Let's be fair. Let's be honest. Let's be critical, not in a sinful sense, but in a um, but in an analytical sense. Um, let's be intellectually honest. Let's not, and I would ask that we not allow um, the politics of today to determine how we think about history. If that makes sense, let's let's let history speak for itself. And hopefully, in doing so. We can learn a lot of things that we didn't know. We can be surprised by a lot of what's happened in history. Um, and I think you will be. Um, but, we but we have to not allow our paradigms to completely influence the way that we think about history. We can't ignore it completely. But let's not shape history to our way of thinking. Either way, whether it would, whether it would lean liberal, whether it would lean conservative, libertarian, whatever. Let's let history speak for itself. Let's let historical figures speak for themselves. They don't need our defense. You guys are not going to like what I have to say about the Founding Fathers. I can just tell you that right now. Abby, your parents certainly won't like what I have to say about the Founding Fathers. Um, but again, let's let them speak for themselves. They don't need our defense. It's already happened. Let's be fair. Let's be good students. Let's be good scholars. And let's have a heck of a lot of fun. What do you say? <laughs>